Good morning. The mighty New Testament church flees before the rabble. Was Jesus surprised? We're looking at Mark 14, verse 43 to 52. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now his betrayer had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away safely. As soon as he had come, immediately he went up to him and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then they all forsook him and fled. Now a young, certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body, and the young man laid a hold of him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. Anyway, here's the sequence here where the disciples flee. Everybody, it's chaos. They all turn and flee and leave Jesus in the hands of the officials. So Jesus was not surprised. Verse 49 tells us why. Notice what it said there. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Jesus wasn't surprised, which raises the question, must the scriptures be fulfilled because God ordains it, because God imposes it upon history, or must the scriptures be fulfilled because God sees it and he shows it to Jesus prophetically and he, he simply shows him what's coming? Is it because God wills it or because God reveals it? Does he cause it to be or does he simply share insight that it would be? Okay, so listen, we have actual, not merely theoretical, free will. It's actual free will. We get to make the choices. God has given us power to think and do. It is ours to exercise. Choice is ours to exercise. God has the power to intervene, but he restricts himself. And he does not mess with everything in history. Much of it, he just allows it to run as it will. If he didn't restrain his will, nothing would really be revealed. We wouldn't see how bad sin was. We wouldn't see how good righteousness is. So God sort of has to pull back a little bit and let this thing show what it's made out of, show the, the awful, the bad ending at the end. It's like when you've got a wood stove in your house and you've got a little kid and you say, don't, whatever you do, don't touch the wood stove. Uh, and they need to learn. And you know what? Instead of obeying you, someone goes over and touches the stove. Ouch! And they learn why you said that. God has to allow the universe to see what happens when wickedness gets, gets to do just a little bit of stuff. If he didn't restrain the exercise of his will, this wouldn't be revealed, it wouldn't be clarified enough, and he's trying to let it kind of hang itself on its own rope. And, and so God exercises a limited intervention. The scriptures must be fulfilled because they're revealed by a God of truth. They're God-breathed by the spirit of truth. And check this, this is truth. Left to ourselves, us humans will, inevitably, in, in every single case that would come, left to ourself, we will turn and flee just to save our own skin. That's what we're made out of. That's what we're like without God's help to bring us back. But Jesus understood that they would all fail. He understood they would all let go of God's strength and fail this test. And yet, it's our understanding that all the apostles, except Judas, all of them later passed spiritual tests. And we'll get to meet them one day very soon. Many of them died martyrs' deaths, faithful to the end, but not here, not in this spot. We shouldn't be discouraged by the fleeing disciples. Instead, we should learn from it. We can learn from this lesson. And like Daniel and his three friends, like many of the people in the Bible from Genesis through to Revelation who we see acting faithfully, uh, being victorious in the end. We should be strengthened by those things, but aware of our weakness and our necessity of seeing God's strength and power worked out. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, help us to be faithful. Oh, please, Lord, help us to learn from this lesson, not to cower or give up, but to be strengthened, to come to you, to come to you in need and receive the gifts you have for us, gifts of power from above for overcoming. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Seasons of failure for God's children point us to Jesus for strength to overcome. Take that strength today and go out into this day and live, live right. God be with you.